Boy, it was cold the night I took that picture. I know it was like something like 12, 14 below. Had to advance the film very carefully. I think I'd have towed it off inside the camera. But it was worth some cold fingers, as you can say. It's, it's a pretty nice little picture. It's got quite a bit of distance through the years. Oh, 6353 making a dive into the tunnel at Wacker. You can see it a little better here. Yeah, I should get ready to dive. Boy, that was an awesome Greyhound station. Whew! Awesome Greyhound station. History, of course. Uh, 1823 sitting on the wall in St. Louis. Again, she's a little chewed up in the sides. See, when they made the MC-7, they didn't really make a, a, a super nice rub rail down there along the baggage racks like it should have had. So consequently, MC-7s could get whacked up pretty good from rolling baggage carts. You know, the momentum from a fully loaded baggage cart, you know, you, you, there's a lot, of, a lot of pressure behind that. Particularly when it hits something and bounces off three times. Oh, here's something. This is uh, part of that Greyhound print collection set. There's a 743, an engine forward, uh, a silver side, a senior cruiser MC8, and a very, very rare MC9. Uh, very few people have copies of the MC9 print. They were big 16 by 20s. Up as far as the 8, we've got them hanging on the wall here in the trailer back in Charleston. Perspective was, eh, not too good. Coach is a little shot and squat. Should be a little more leaner than she really is, but all in all, very good. Back in the days when Greyhound cared about their image. London, Ontario. Way back when. Again, another relatively easy little terminal to uh, to model. I do believe the Corgi people are contemplating bringing out a terminal. It isn't carved in stone yet. Again, you guys asked if I might not throw some Greyhound stations around the land in uh, in the next Greyhound video, and here's San Luis Obispo in California. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's San Luis Obispo. When you've taken over a half a million bus pictures through the years, sometimes things tend to swim together. 90% sure it's San Luis Obispo. Most all of the pictures I've ever taken, I can recognize immediately. They're more or less like my children. And, of course, this is a real hunk of history now. That's gone. It's in a lot of the IBC videos, because I made sure I videoed the devil out of this before the end came. And that's the old St. James Avenue Greyhound Station in Boston. Once again, history. They're working out of South Station down there now. Another hunk of history. That was the main service floor of the Greyhound Garage in New York City. Absolutely amazing what the greed merchants can do to such a beautiful institution as this was. Little Rock, 8147 on our way to Atlanta. Those big flexible tubes hanging down there, those are in-station air conditioning and uh, heating in the winter. The buses uh, underneath the, the driver's window had a, a place you would couple them up. That way they could shut the car down, either keep it cool or keep it warm, as the case may be. 4475 MC8 loading at Newton, Massachusetts. That's the end of the line for the MBTA trolley cars and it, that was a very smart move to make this suburban station here.
they lured quite a few folks at this Newton uh, MBTA station. This was back in the days when Greyhound had an hourly service to New York, and then, even then, hourly service, in some instances, running doubles. The Transportation Center at Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Canadian Greyhound MC9588, just coming in. She was the Transcon. She crossed the entire length and breadth of Canada. She was on her way to Vancouver. The little transportation center at uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario is a neat place to take bus pictures if you were up that way riding around. Another hunk of history, 4722, uh, loading for New York at the old Providence uh, bus station. It was shared uh, and owned by uh, Short Lines, or uh, Bonanza Bus, rather. That's when the, those two were close allies. Bonanza bus, of course, has in a sense uh, distanced itself as much as possible from the new Greyhound. And the new Greyhound, of course, has distanced itself as much as possible from the bus industry. Oh, this was another one of those super cold days. 3219 up in Bangor, Maine. And I do want to tell you it was cold. And that little car wasn't going to go without some assistance that morning either. Forty-three thirty-two uh, again at the MBTA station in Newton, Massachusetts. I got off to the picture of where I was going down in New York. I had oh, I. I had, I had quite a hiatus away from buses at the latter part of the 60s. Uh, actually, what it was, I couldn't rub two nickels together. My life depended on it. And uh, seeing the MCIs come to life, you know, you know when, when I broke away, the 4106s and that were still top dogs. And seeing these things come on the line, well, look, just rekindled the interest all over again. Not the uh, MC8, the MC5 is what rekindled it all. Here's Fleet 495 at the Sault Ste. Marie Bus Center. There's a neat little restaurant in there, too. They, they, they serve very, very good food. There, over on the right of the screen, you can see uh, one of Ontario Northland Railroad's buses. They're featured very prominently in the Canadian Memories video, too, I want to tell you. Very interesting operation. This is a brand new, well, almost brand new MC8 here. 7780 sitting up in Victoria, British Columbia on charter. And their group off for the day. Twenty-three seventy-five, starting on her run from St. Louis. Over there on the far left, you can just see the forty-nine oh five from Great Southern Coaches. They're featured around in the Bus and I scrapbook. The Bus and I scrapbook, incidentally, is awesome. It has a it has a gazillion buses from all around America, various carriers of every type, kind, and description, and so if you like this, you might consider that one too as well. When I first brought out the scrapbook series of videos, well, uh, I wasn't sure whether they would find any any success or not, and in reality, they did. Because as, uh, as the IBC has started telling me, they said, well, listen, all it is is a book on videotape. And we enjoy looking at these. And 2250 here is getting ready to pull into the track at St. Louis to make a run to New York City. And he said, it's so much easier than, than setting up slides. As a matter of fact, nowadays at Bus Bash, I show videos. I no longer set up slides. This is just so much simpler. So far, I've had great luck in getting large. TVs at, uh, at the hotels we are at at Bus Bash. 
47.32 at uh, Chicago. Getting ready to jump on the whacker. Just going to make a run across up through Minneapolis and across to Seattle. It's, it, it's a good vantage point if you can sometimes get above the buses. It changes the perspective and consequently makes for a, a more interesting shot and a different shot rather than the routine ground level jobs. Yeah, 4483 in Harrisburg. This is where she was traded in her silver top for blue. The last paint scheme that the uh, MC8s would receive. 4485 loading up in Rockland, Maine again. State Street News. MC8 still with their silver top. She was the the last car of the night. She'd have you in Boston early in the morning. Really early. Like six or something. Fleet 1060. MC8. Richmond in the holding pen. The old Richmond, not the new one. Twenty three seventy nine coming into St. Louis. Lazy driver. It had a charter sign on it, but actually the car was coming in from uh, uh, the east. Sixty two forty six on a cold day in Harrisburg. Capitol Trailways uh, yard was a good place to catch greyhounds, of course, along with the Capitol Trailways equipment as well. 44.55 in Scranton. Uh, that's when they had the 75 dollar fare anywhere. They bounced that fare up and down the pike and around six ways to Sunday, I want to tell you. Oh, here's an interesting shot. This is the the border crossing at uh, Callis, Maine. The bus comes over from St. Stephen, New Brunswick, just about uh, 400 feet away across the river and then stops abruptly here for, well, depending on how long or what kind of people she's got on board. It, it can't hang around there. If you give the, if somebody on board gives the, the border guard any kind of ration of crap well man that driver can hold that bus up until the cows come home and they do it too you, you don't ever 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 mess with border guards I don't care whether it's Mexico Canada or the United States you just say yes sir no sir and get the hell out of there and the little uh, Rockland Maine State News Company with Fleet 4465 and a very, very dirty tag axle, which was exceedingly rare in those days. She must have had a wheel failure, uh, and they had to throw one on in a hurry. Because this is the days when greyhounds were clean as a whistle. The little Rockland main station boarded and, and, and received quite a few people in freight. 5557 making her way out of the Lincoln Tunnel on Route 3 running down to Washington. MC8. Like I said, say that's a great place to take bus pictures. Not in the winter though. You get damn cold there. 4285 loading in the bus station in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now this particular bus station here was just being, it was in the planning stage the last time I lived in Bridgeport and moved away. 
My my uh, station was a neat little old curb sort of curb loading commission agency. It was a nice place. This is the local coming out of New York. I'm going up to Boston. Uh, Greyhound 440, Canadian Greyhound Lines loading at Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Silver top date. We still have uh, some of those beautiful Canadian Maple Leaf Greyhound Dog Depot uh, sign decals here, you know, in case you're interested. There's a few left. 1634, nose in. Uh, Fresno. Yeah, that was the old Fresno station, I believe. MC7 Big Bear. Our last livery. This one was in pretty regal shape, I want to tell you. 0760. Zero, of course, do you know what? And that's right. She's a combo car. See her freight door back there in the Santa Cruiser rear end. Full tired rear end. This was in St. Louis. Seventy-five, seventy, coming out of the outbound lane at uh, Randolph Street, on our way to Wacker Boulevard, and are running up to Minneapolis today. Right behind her was 42-43, and she'd be running down to St. Petersburg, Florida from Chicago, down through the middle of the country. He came out of the tunnel a little fast, that boy did, and he did a little bit of the MCI lean there. Oh, there's one of the MC5Cs, uh, Saudi Arabian Greyhounds, uh, inner city version. Those were the inner city cars. I remember uh, when I was up there, they they had not yet put uh, one of the rear door transit ones on rubber. They did the inner cities first. A lot of uh, IBCers are not aware what that plate on the roof is. That That's a heat plate to keep the bus from being scalding out there in the desert. Those cars all had uh, air conditioning water coolers on board too. Something that line buses should have in America. Uh, this was uh, Eagle Day down at the Eagle plant some time ago with uh, one of the little model Eagle 15s. Uh, the track side of uh, Albany, New York. Service facility over to the side there. It was the western terminus also for uh, Bonanza bus. You can see one down the end coming out of uh, Rhode Island and Connecticut and Mass. Oh, this is a real heart tug of this picture. This is 4308. On the left-hand side of the screen there is Jarvis Restaurant. This was shot in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, old Mr. Jarvis was one of the first Greyhound Commission agencies ever in existence. Something like 1929, that restaurant was a Greyhound Commission agency from that time period. It was always a quite a social restaurant, a gathering on the square back in those days. Of course, Portsmouth was a heck of a lot smaller than it is today. And uh, when Mr. Jarvis passed away, he lived to be about... 90 odd years old and his his kin closed the restaurant down I guess they didn't want anything to do with it I sure would have liked to walk around in that basement down there before they did though I bet there was some stuff squirrel down there backside mobile Alabama back in 79 now there's there's some freight there there's there's passengers bags, but that's that's nearly all freight on all those trucks. They're waiting for other cars, of course. I don't know if Greyhound's freight business is what it used to be, because 
the present regime may have screwed that up as well. Now, here's 3211 when she was a relatively new puppy in the old uh, Greyhound garage in New York City. They parked cars up on the roof and then they parked them down on the lower level as well. But look at that, she's spitting polish there. 4650 pulling on into uh, the depot at uh, Mobile. This is the end of the line for her. She was coming down out of Atlanta. She was a second section and they'd cut her out at Mobile. AD-12 doing the MCI lean at Omaha. That's That terminal back there is the original Union Pacific Stages uh, Overland Greyhound Terminal. That's where their home offices were and everything. A very neat old station, very historic old station. She's a pull-through and a dog-leg affair, an L-shaped affair. 55-62 on the Mass Pike, bopping along roughly at about 70 miles an hour. Headed for Boston, she's just out of New York. Back in the days when 